This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you go to the 3D Experience Student Community to showcase your design, get support, and to download the charge-up field and kit of parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Go to Student Community. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. And we're so excited to have back on the Open Alliance show here uh, for our Week 5 recap. Generals 3636, Silas and Ari coming back once again. Uh, they were on in uh, Week 2, had some awesome progress to show off. We're going to be talking about their uh, second robot iteration, uh, Manipulator and Vision as well. Maybe a couple other surprises you never know as we go through. So, uh, Silas and Ari, welcome back. Do you mind just uh, telling us uh, once again who each person is and then uh, what you do on the team before we hop in? Uh, hi, I'm Silas, and I'm the programming lead and co-captain. Hi, I'm Ari, and I'm the CAD lead. So uh, speaking about CAD, I know we got your uh, screen share on there. We'll show off a whole bunch of stuff with that. Uh, and I can't wait to just talk about where your progress is on your robot. What do you want to start with first? I mean, I can check out the robot. Got, yeah. Yeah, robot. There's been a lot of significant change since the last time this thing's been on here. The, the camera was hiding it a little bit, so we can only see the top half originally. Now we can see it. So awesome, guys. Yeah. I mean, as you can see, we got different superstructure, ankle bars, uh, new arm, roughly manufactured manipulator, uh, dual motors this time, and a two-stage chain powering, two-stage chain powering the main unit. You enable. Do you want to enable it to? Yep. It's not right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Those are the main changes that have happened since last time. And we have prototypes of the players as seen uh, on the screen share and on our table here. Triple roller, triple roller intake, and our new swerve drivetrain that has been newly machined as well. So yeah, we, we just finished machining our swerve drive train, the belly pan and all the um, different box tube parts of it. And we're planning on this robot right now is on a kit of parts drive train. And we're planning on switching it out in the coming week, hopefully to the swerve. So when you're designing your, your superstructure and everything for that, does that impact at all from the KOP chassis over to the swerve? Or did you just design all that to be around what your swerve chassis is going to be? Yeah, so we somewhat uh, designed the swerve chassis to like be able to accept the superstructure that we have right now. The only significant change would be like a couple of gussets, like changing like a couple of the angles on the forward box tubes and the rear box tube spans all the way across the swerve drive train. So you can basically just undo some two plugs and move the entire superstructure from this robot onto the swerve drive train. Uh, that's really cool and see the the progress so far you know um, I, I love to kind of just touch on, on a couple other uh, parts uh, with your uh, intakes as well too uh, can we put the uh, intake cad back up on screen I didn't actually get a chance to show that I'd love to just have you talk a little uh, bit yeah. more uh, about uh, a little more of an overview of what what this is so far and any changes from a few weeks ago yeah so this is more of a triple roller approach as some other open alliance teams have uh, have tried with these uh, two sets of rollers on the front with the purpose of taking cones from the front in like this and cubes from the bottom. So yeah, here. this was our previous design. We had a claw that um, can close and open yeah. and picks up game pieces. Um, but we wanted something a bit faster because this you have to position the claw on top of the game piece and then close it. Uh, we want something that we can just drive over and pick up the game piece. Yeah, much more significant touch it, own it factor, if you want to put it that way, because the rollers just suck up the cube or the cone, and it's and it's in. As well, it's a lot more simple than the claw, which has I mean, it's been proven difficult to program, hasn't it? Yeah, we've been struggling a lot with getting the programming working on the claw and the entire arm, in fact. So, is with the the goal with the intake that you were showing in CAD and the one that you're you're prototyping now. 
with the three roller design is it the so you have a kind of a different configuration than one, than some of the other ones that I've seen, right? So is this designed for like, are you trying to pick up the cones in a horizontal configuration or a vertical configuration? Now, if the, while this, uh, this intake is still compatible with the vertical wrist that we have, and it can pick up cones either while they're standing up like this or tip towards the robot on the ground. Got like it. that, roughly. So, so do, do you yeah. almost so you're prefer it being tipped then? Um, it could work either way because, like, some testing from other teams revealed that you could drop the cone at a specific angle from the from the substation, yeah. and it'll like always land consistently. So you can utilize that to always have the cone point towards your robot, and intake it from the ground if there's like congestion at the at the teller or you can just use the teller by driving up to it and sucking up the cone. And and which which one of those is more the strategy you think you want? Are you gonna try to pick them up when they're knocked down or do you think more of them are gonna be from the teller? We're, I believe we're going to try and take from the teller if we can, but if there's a lot of congestion, we always have the option to be able to pick them up from the ground. Yeah. That's really interesting. Yeah, the question I guess I have on that is with, with the way that your wrist is, um, if you're going to acquire cones that are that are vertical, can, can you actually just kind of demonstrate how that process works like with that prototype? Yeah. So the, um, the arm have this on a pivoting wrist that can go up and down like this. Yeah. Uh, and then we have it at the right height, drive forwards over this, and hopefully pick it up just like that. So I guess my question is, have you have you had a chance to like test like how quickly you can do that? Because you talked about the touch and own it aspect. Um, so I guess my question is, have you have you had a chance to really experiment at that sort of angle? How quickly you how quickly you can drive up and acquire that? As of right now, this has just been wired up, and we were just doing some trials outside just before this started. Yeah. So, uh, the data we have is limited. However. Uh, yeah, we're gonna continue to we're gonna continue to work on it. Yeah, and I think that we were testing this with some drills before uh, we put an actual motor on it, and it was able to pick them up pretty fast. That's awesome. I'm very excited to see uh, that uh, get on your robot and see some more testing uh, from your team, which I know you'll be posting on your OA blogs as well, so we can always uh, check that out and see what that progress looks like as well too. Uh, anything else from a, a mechanical side of your robot you want to talk about, or should we uh, jump into uh, vision on your robot? I think we can go to vision. All right. Um, so this year we've been testing with two different vision solutions. We were able to get the Limelight 3, which we have on the bottom right here. Um, and right next to it, there is a um, Pi camera or, or a Pi. orange Pi with a camera uh, running photon vision. And we're testing right now to see which is the faster, more reliable, lowest latency solution. Um, and so far, it looks like Limelight, without much testing, is pretty like down to an inch, fairly stable. And the Photon Vision, we have had for longer, so we've had more testing with it. Um, and it gets to be a bit unreliable at like 10 feet away. It's jumping around a bit. So how will you make the decision between the two of them? Is it it's like you're not going to run both of them on your robot? You're going to pick which one you want to want to go forward with, right? Um. Yeah. So this mount right here is supposed to once we get the limelight um, connected to the robot code, we're just going to do some testing probably in the next week um, and figure out which one it has the faster position updating um, and more accurate position, and we'll just go with that one on the final robot. What are uh, maybe some of your autonomous strategies that you're looking at, at doing? Um, we'll probably be trying to automate uh, driving up to the cones and cube current scoring stations so that we can uh, press a button and drive up there, especially with the swerve now, it's pretty easy because you can just drive in a straight line to the closest um, scoring station and then drop off whatever game piece that you have. Um, but, 
and also probably for picking up from the bank teller, we're going to try to get some automation for that. Um, and we also have got a charge station. We built a charge station and we've been testing around with it. And it seems like with the tall robot, it's pretty hard to balance because it's just got so much momentum going over the charge station. So the balance isn't great. Um, and probably gonna have to do some sort of auto balancing for that. And then from an end game perspective, are, um, are you looking at driving up the charge station and you mentioned doing an auto balance, anything else that you're looking at doing from a manipulator standpoint or anything like that on the charge station? Not at the moment, I don't think. Perfect. So looking uh, in the future, in the next couple of weeks uh, for your team, what are kind of next steps? What do you want to get accomplished? Uh, what are your main goals uh, looking at into your next event? Well, we plan to swap the superstructure in uh, probably this week and uh, maybe paint the box tube, get it all nice looking and get some hard drive practice, auto testing and scoring. Yeah, one thing that we've been working on recently is trying to get the arm automated so that we can uh, have it move to specific scoring positions at the press of a button. Um, we were working on that this meeting and we hopefully will have that done. Get that um, working on the current robot prototype before we move over to the next superstructure so we can have a ton of driver practice or as much driver practice as we can before, the, um, for, before our first competition. Which is uh, what week are, two. What are you using for uh, sensor feedback on your, uh, on your arm? Uh, we have an absolute encoder on the actual shoulder part of the arm and then a few limit switches around the place that we can zero the other um, neo encoders. So you're kind of going to use two different things for the absolute, but maybe a little bit of incremental in between positions. Um, yeah. And how, how many, how many pre positions do you think you're going to have for your arm? Um, probably one position for each. A scoring node and then a position for intaking and a position for fully stowed uh, in the robot. So the, the operator's job should be as easy as just like, I'm scoring mid or I'm scoring I or I'm picking up from the yeah. Drum. So well, and hopefully that to interpolate to um, when you press the button to score, it goes to the correct distance for each node. Auto align with the uh, yeah. Lines. Well, we'll be interested to see what your vision, uh, which one option you go with for that, and of course uh, how that impacts uh, how you're uh, uh, actually doing those prepositions as well too. So make sure you uh, watch uh, General's uh, uh, blog both on Chief Delphi and also on the uh, OA Discord as well too. Follow their progress. Week two is your first event on in Wilsonville, uh, so not a whole lot of time until your first event, but we can't wait to see uh, your performance and how you do there. And thanks a lot for sharing your uh, robot progress with us, guys, and we can't wait to see uh, your uh, robot get together. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you go to the 3D Experience Student Community to showcase your design, get support, and to download the charge up field and kit of parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Go to Student Community. FRC Premiere Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premiere 23. Premiere Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premiere 23. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.